Hello, my name is Ian Cranston. I'm a diabetes physician based in Portsmouth in the UK. And I was invited here to Diet Egypt 2019 um, by sponsors Eli Lilly um, to talk uh, both um, in a session about um, GLP-1 uh, use with dilaglutide, but also to talk about the use of the ambulatory glucose profile uh, in management of glycemia related problems in diabetes. I think use of ambulatory glucose profile as part of an assessment of continuous glucose monitoring uh, tools is something that we will be doing more and more of in future years and so I wanted to share a little bit of my own personal experience in using that for the last decade or so in terms of how we can use it to identify what I consider to be probably the largest clinical problem in optimizing glucose control, which is that of managing glucose variability. Although we often think about uh, overall glucose load as the problem, uh, both micro and macrovascular, um, as we've just heard beautifully from Professor Roussel from France, um, the achievement of a redu reduced glucose load is absolutely dependent upon us being able to minimize glucose flux uh, in order to avoid hypoglycemia, which would otherwise get in the way of that better overall glucose control. And I think what's important to recognize is that using um, a full profile with uh, CGM allows us both to confirm when things are going well, but also to diagnose sometimes the challenges when they're not going so well. Uh, there are specific patterns that we can see on the ambulatory glucose profile which allow us to make adjustments uh, and I think that was what I was trying to introduce uh, into the meeting today because I think it allows us to be far more effective than we've previously been in terms of achieving that overall improvement in glucose control. An area where I think that's particularly important is in the management of postprandial glucose uh, and that's something that we see as a major issue increasingly in type 2 diabetes um, with therapies that are based uh, on reducing overall glucose but not really coping that well with the issues around meals. I think from that perspective we see uh, using ambulatory glucose profiles that both treatments with SGLT2 inhibitors and uh, treatments with GLP-1 receptor agonists will also help us to reduce postprandial control. And I think probably of, of my favorite from that perspective, it is the GLP-1 RAs because of the fact that they have, I think, a dual effect. One effect uh, being clearly on the um, glucose, uh, sorry, my, my apologies, the insulin release associated with the meal, but also because of the central effects that we can see both on appetite and on uh, glucagon secretion. And I think therefore for the future, this group of drugs is probably going to be the single most important element of our aim to reduce this postprandial glucose, which we know associates with adverse cardiovascular outcome.